Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. We're given that there are two equilateral triangles inside of this semicircle, and it wants us to find the area of the larger triangle. We're also given that this length equals this length. This is day one of our 2025 Advent calendar. For the month of December, we're gonna solve 31 Katrina Ag puzzles. And if you wanna try this one, pause it right now, because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. Since we're given two equilateral triangles, let's use these notes for equilateral triangles. We know the area in terms of a side length, and we know the height in terms of a side length. Let's mark the side of the unknown equilateral triangle S, and then let's mark the side of this equilateral triangle X. And let's see what we can do from here. First, we can focus on this larger triangle, and we can write a formula for our question mark. It's equal to the area of this triangle, so we can use this formula for area. So the question mark is equal to root 3 over 4, or S squared. This is what we're trying to find. Let's put a box around it and let's move it down here. And then we can focus on the smaller triangle. Since we're given the area, let's do the area formula again, but this time it'll be root three over four X squared because X is the side length of the triangle. And then we know that this area is equal to three. So now we have three is equal to root three over four X squared. And now from here to get the X by itself, let's multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of this. To simplify the left-hand side, we can think of of this three as a root three times root three. And then this root three on top and this root three on bottom will cancel each other out. So we're left with four radical three. And then on the right hand side, this and the reciprocal will cancel each other out. We'll be left with x squared. For the next step, let's square root both sides of the equation. On the left hand side, for each of these terms under the red square root, they can each get their own red square root. The red square root of four is equal to two, and the red square root of the square root of three is the fourth root of three. So the left hand side is 2 fourth root of 3. And then on the right hand side, since x is a positive value, the red square root of x squared is equal to x. And now we have our value for x. It's equal to 2 fourth root of 3. So we can change this x into 2 fourth root of 3. From here, let's do something with the height. Let's construct the height of this triangle and label it h. And this height is also a radius of the semicircle. Let's draw another radius of the semicircle. It will also have a length of h. And then from here, let's draw this segment and this segment. We've now created a little triangle here, and the base of our new triangle is exactly half of a side length of our green equilateral triangle. So each of these are s over two. And now we can focus on our new triangle. Since we're trying to solve for s, let's express everything in terms of s. This h is the same thing as this h. We can rewrite it as root three over two s. So now if we can solve for s, we'll be ready to solve for this. I think we're done with these notes. Let's bring these down here and let's enhance our triangle. This angle down here is made up of the two angles of these two triangles. Since they're equilateral triangles, each of them are equal to 60 degrees, which means the whole thing will be 120 degrees. And now we have three sides of the triangle and an angle. This is perfect for the law of cosines. The law of cosines is a more general case of the Pythagorean theorem. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but then we also have this extra piece right here. Since it's not a right triangle, we have to do this piece right here. We have to subtract two times this side length times this side length times the cosine of the angle in between them. And this will work for any triangle. Let's apply it to our triangle here. It'll be this squared equals this squared plus this squared minus 2 times this times this times cosine of 120. And now we have one equation and one variable, so we should be able to solve for s. For the left-hand side, each of these will get their own square. Root 3 squared is 3, s squared is s squared, and 2 squared is equal to 4. And then that'll be equal to s squared over 2 squared, which is equal to 4, plus 2 squared, which is equal to 4. And then the fourth root of 3 squared is equal to the square root of 3. And then we can subtract 2 times this times this, and the cosine of 120 degrees is negative one half. And you can see that on the unit circle right here. The cosine of 120 degrees is negative one half. And now we can clean all this up. Let's focus on this right here. Negative times a negative is a positive, and this two on top and this two on bottom will cancel each other out, leaving us with s. And then this two times this one half will all cancel out, leaving us with the fourth root of three. And now we can smush everything together and give ourselves some more room. Since we have an s squared term and an s term, this is gonna be a quadratic. Let's set it all equal to zero by 
by subtracting this from both sides. On the left hand side, three of these minus three of these is zero. And on the right hand side, one of these minus three of these is negative two of these. And then we can copy down everything else. We can simplify the two over four to become one half. And then I don't really like fractions, so to get rid of this two in the denominator, let's multiply both sides of the equation by negative two. On the left hand side, negative two times zero is still zero. And then on the right hand side, the negative two will distribute to each of these terms. It'll give us positive s squared minus eight root three minus two fourth root of three s's. And now we got rid of the fraction. That's a relief. And now from here, let's rearrange the order. So we have the s squared term, the s term, and the constant term. And now we're ready for the quadratic form. Formula. It's s equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c whole thing over 2a. Now we can clean things up a little bit. Inside of the square root, negative 2 squared is equal to 4, and the fourth root of 3 squared is equal to the square root of 3. And then negative times negative is a positive. 4 times 1 times 8 is 32, and we can bring down the square root of 3. 4 root 3 plus 32 root 3 is 36 root 3. And then the 36 and the root 3 can each get their own square roots. The square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of root 3 is the fourth root root of three. Now before we can combine these on top, we have to deal with the plus or minus. Since s is a positive value, two of these minus six of these will give us a negative value. So the minus version is invalid. We can change this plus minus into a plus. And then two of these plus six of these is eight of these, and eight divided by two is equal to four. And now we have our value for s. s is equal to four times the fourth root of three. Let's bring this up here to solve for our question mark. Enhance. In the place of the s, let's plug in four fourth root of three. And then to simplify this, the square will go to each of these. So we'll have four squared, fourth root of three squared. Four squared is equal to 16. And the fourth root of three squared is square root of three. Let's rearrange things a little bit. And 16 divided by four is equal to four. And root three times root three is equal to three. Four times three is equal to 12. And we now have the answer to our question. Let's give it a label of square units and put a box around it. How exciting. This is day one of the 2025 advent calendar. And this is the problem for day two. We're given two regular hexagons. This length is equal to six, and it wants us to find this length. This one looks like it'll be a fun one. How exciting.